Hello, everyone. Welcome to Devs and Coffee. I'm Amanda, and I'm part of the Alexa Developer Marketing Team. We're excited to be chatting with Alexa developers and sharing their stories. We're going to talk to them about their journey with voice, with Alexa skills, what's worked for them and what hasn't, and of course, any tips they have to help fellow developers build successful experiences on Alexa. Our guest today is Alarna Che. She is the founder of Adasa Innovations. Alarna, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. This is your time to talk. Just tell me a little bit about yourself, your company, and what you're working on. Yeah, sure. So Adasa Innovations um, is a company that I started kind of, it, it all built up from Alexa, actually. So um, back when I was in university, I this was 20, 2016, the year of 2016 is when I was introduced to Alexa. Um, and I thought that'd be a great present for my mom for Christmas. Um, when I say for my mom, it was kind of secretly for me as well, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it to my mom. Um, so on Christmas Day, opened it up, set it up, and then we we played around with it and found that there were these like apps. Um, and it was very interesting because at the time I thought, I didn't realize that these were made by third party developers. I generally thought that this was just something that uh, this Alexa had. Um, and so I got an email from AWS, which was like, learn how to build an Alexa skill. Um, and there was also uh, this conference that you could go to this um, where they, they host it in Cambridge. Um, and I went there to kind of learn how to build Alexa skills. And that kind of kicked off the journey because if it weren't for that kind of session and how easily it was to set up and create an Alexa skill that, that the, the teachings that we learned from that, I don't think I would be here today. So it was really the, how easy it was to get that, get into it. So after that, I started just tinkering around and building so many skills. This was still during university. So I was very much very, very interested in that. Um, and I was at the same time, they introduced hackathons as well. So in my mind, I was like, it, uh, there was this hackathon for kids and I actually had this uh, this project that I'd been doing uh, before Alexa, which was Music Bop Adventures. And I was like very interested to put it on Alexa because on YouTube, I found that was very saturated. There was so many videos on there already, but the, the audience you could get on Alexa, I was like, right, I've got to put it on there. And before the hacker format, actually, this was before kids skills were uh, available. I get a lot of emails from the certification team saying, no, you can't, it's not available for kids, it's not available for kids. So eventually when this hack form came about, um, it was great because it was for kids and we could finally do it. And um, I ended up being one of the the winners for that hackathon. And this was kind of a wake up call where I was like, wow, you, you know what? Um, I, I, I won 10,000 pounds, $10,000 for, and I just thought, this is, this is great. I can, give it a go after university and just put all my effort into it. That's what I kind of how I started and and that's how I began Adasa Innovations. And also uh, I didn't actually realize at the time that I could put my focus into helping others like build other Alexa skills. So that's when I've, I've been working for uh, like Matchbox. I, I had a, a stint there where I helped them with their skills and, and I've just been ever since working with different organizations um, but now the shift has changed and we're really di diving down and, you know, with the, the whole features of ISP monetization, mm -hmm. there's that opportunity now to actually make money from your skills. Okay. So that's what we're doubling down on now. How many skills have you and your company developed? Oh, um, definitely over a hundred. It's wow. been a, 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 a lot. I wouldn't say it's quite definitely quality over quantity for sure. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, mm -hmm. But, but nowadays with with all the advice and all the feedback and all the, the blog posts you get out there um, over the years, the, the quality of the skills have got so much better. So I would definitely say um, at least 50 high quality ones. So what's your most popular skills um, and what do they do? Are they, are they are they all for kids? Do you have some other stuff? Yeah, so mostly games. Um, mm -hmm. I really enjoy games. I'm a gamer myself, so me too. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Think, yeah, the first the first skill I made was a game um, called Odds On. The most popular um, Alexa skill that we have at the moment is um, probably Riddle Time, um, simple riddle game. 
but I've now shifted into working with um, like partner brands like Top Trumps, for example. So that's I would say now that is our our most popular game. It's using brands. Um, they've got Disney and they've, they've got their own Top Trumps quiz. So that's that's our most popular. Oh, very cool. How did you get the shift to working with brands like Disney and Top Trumps? All from experience, really. So I I started off with, with no idea into this business and just by learning from uh, going to networking events and talking to other developers, talking to other people in the space, I was able to learn a lot that you can get licensing. You can go to these events. There was an event in, in London that I went to a few years ago um, and I it was a, a bunch of brands and I just went up to them, spoke to them and got their cards and told them about all the wonderful things about Alexa, let's get you onto the platform. So yeah, that's how I got into it. What's the most exciting thing you're working on right now? I I think just as I mentioned, is just seeing how the, how many cool features are coming out and just, it gives me the confidence that Alexa is going to be around for a long time. So putting the, uh, putting the um, ISP in the, the uh, skills and seeing what can drive more customers to them. Um, and working on on doing some games that uh, a bit different. So the ISP you would think is like a really good feature to have for the in-scale purchasing and for any kind of game monetization? Definitely. I think before when I tried it, I guess I wasn't as knowledgeable in that area of marketing and and also how to convert. And I think learning about conversions and analytics has been a very good tool for me and also very good rewarding experience to then put it into these skills and then see a good growth into it. What do you see as the future of voice experience? For me, I definitely see it as a companion. I've said this is, I think from the beginning, it's a great tool to have that can sometimes replace different scenarios, but voice is a companion. You see it in the movies, you see it in in Iron Man and all those sci-fi movies, that it, it, it's something that can aid people in those short-term commands instead of doing something longer. So I see voice being a great companion in that kind of area. Do you have any tips that you want to share with fellow developers? Speak to people who are kind of professional and who know what they're doing in, in each of the areas. As someone who just kind of wore many hats when building skills, it's actually just take advice and, and be persistent and also as soon as you can really learn analytics because that mm-hmm. will save you so many things so many times with things i've i've managed to find you're not in the room with them when people are using or interacting with your skills so analytics is probably the best way to kind of get as close to that as possible that's the one thing i'd say is analyze your skills and analyze how they're using it um and that can help a lot yeah it's always good to know like what your users are liking what they're maybe getting yeah. stuck on where they're churning out, all that stuff is just super valuable. Actually, I can give you an, a good example, actually. In um, one of the games I was doing, um, this comes back to ISP, I had um, I, I, I launched a subscription and I, I found this trend where subscribers would subscribe, no problem. So they were seeing value in it, but then they were leaving afterwards. So there was something wrong in the subscription that was just like... Um, something that was not convincing them to stay. And it was a simple point of, because subscribers want to, just to give you more clar- context, is that it's a quiz game, there's different categories. At, at Initially, I was just giving them a random category. So they had access to all these categories, but it would just be a random question. And just by looking at the analytics, I wanted to do some A-B testing and see, okay, let me give the subscribers a choice and see if they want to pick the categories. We, we did that, and then we found that was the solution. And that's all through analytics. So that's a powerful way of analytics being done. That's really cool. You didn't even have to get, you just noticed through what, how they were interacting with it, that that was what they preferred to do. Yeah. And especially upsell messaging as well. Um, Identifying which upsell messages are most effective and which ones aren't as well. So Mm -hmm. that's been the biggest learning for me. It's really cool to hear those insights from people that are working on stuff like directly for customers and what they're making. All right, I'm going to leave you with one parting question. What is your 
hobby? Like, what do you do outside? Are there any games coming out that you're excited about? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got Hogwarts Legacy on my list. Um, I know that came out. I, I don't have a PS5 or mm-hmm. an Xbox X because I have that rule where I wait till the second generation comes out because they tend to look better. Hogwarts Legacy has a digital deluxe edition where I can get, uh, I can use it on both PS4 and PS5 for the future ones. So that's the one game that I, yeah, I'm really into right now. That's awesome. It's just been wonderful having you. Uh, thank you so much for, for sitting down with me today and having this coffee chat. I look forward to seeing what comes out from the from Adassa Innovations and the other games that you're working on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.